Hi guys, welcome to this week's demo. This week, I wanted to share some ideas with you for using the doors paper. So this is my art. Um, I decided that I wanted to uh, create um, a little prize for when I came, um, when I had my Alice in Wonderland event. And so I passed out this paper, which was my door prize. Ha ha ha. And so everyone that showed up for my event got a free sheet of the doors. Um, I now sell it at the shop. Um, the sheets are $1.50 a piece. Um, and I have had a number of people show me their little watercolor doors and it's just absolutely so cute. So I wanted to share some ideas with you for using this paper um, to create some fun little, you know, crafty things. So let's get started. All right. So my very first idea that I wanted to go with here was a cutting out these door, this door here with the bricks all the way around it. It is so cool. So um, we're just gonna go, we're gonna, this, I'm gonna warn you ahead of time that this demo has a bit of fussy cutting um, associated with it because I, well, one, I actually kind of like to fussy cut, but two, um, the doors, they, um, are on the page here there's some other things that kind of touch the doors like some other doors touching this door and so i wanted to just go in here and trim all that out all right so this is going to be my card base here is this piece of burgundy and so i happen to know that i am going to end up cutting off some of my little bricks so i might as well just go ahead and do that now so we're just going to go in here and i apologize that there is so much fussy cutting with this one specifically, but here we go. We are doing it. All right. uh, one of my friends, Becky, she actually, scissors are a little funky. Um, she actually cut this one out first and I remember looking at it and being like, oh my gosh, you cut out all the little bricks. It just makes me so happy to see other people create things with my art. It just, it brings me a lot of joy. So we're just gonna go ahead and fussy cut these little bricky bricks. Okay. All right. And I know it's not perfect, but that's a-okay. Sometimes it's not perfect. Right. And we're going to go in and we're going to do some watercolors and things on this as well. So that way the brick color, we can kind of match it at least somewhat um, with the background um, card base here. Okay. So, oh my goodness. I really did draw a lot of bricks on here, didn't I? Becky's probably watching saying, oh yeah, yeah, you did do a lot of bricks, Ellie. I know because I cut this out. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but sometimes fussy cutting can be a lot of fun. Sometimes it can be annoying, um, but I really, I do enjoy fussy cutting. For many years, I actually, I worked with a client and she liked to go to the library. And so at the library, there are a bunch of um, free magazines downstairs. And so I would always go there and look through the magazines and then I would just fussy cut stuff for doing collage. And so I learned to really love doing fussy cutting um, because it was just something that, you know, was always re readily available to me, but it also, um, it was just, I don't know, for whatever reason, it just, um, it's kind of meditative. It's just kind of relaxing. And then you can take your time really cutting out all the little intricate bits. Oh my goodness. I promise this is not going to take too much longer here. Are a lot of intricate little bits. This is, the, I think, this is the only one I did this many bricks on. So, luckily for you guys, you won't have to do as much fussy cutting for the rest of my door ideas. This is going to be the main, the mainest one with the fussy cutting. Oh, we'll do one more little section down here. Okay. Oh, I missed a spot on this side. guys all right I think that's gonna be good enough I suppose I probably should have fussy cut this ahead of time but I didn't okay so there we have our door and I'm gonna notice here I'm gonna to have to trim off some more of these bricks but I'll, I'll do that when the time comes okay so now I'm gonna get out my self-healing mat here and I'm gonna do some um, 
exacto knife cutting. So I really want my doors to open up. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that on the left and on the right that we are not cutting on the door out. We're only cutting the door so that it opens up, okay? If you need to use a ruler while you're doing this, um, that's a great idea. Um, there's nothing wrong with using a ruler and it's a nice way to get a nice, clean, even, straight line. I'm gonna do this right here down the middle. All right, my doors will open up perfectly. And then I'm gonna actually use my scoring tool So then that way I can really get nice, clean fold lines on here. I'm just gonna find that groove there. I'm gonna do the same with that here. Oops. Okay. All right, so now when I open my doors, my doors will open, there we go. There we are. So at the bottom here, you wanna make sure you don't actually cut off the um, the little stairs, but just know that there are some stairs there and you may end up cutting them off and they can always re-glue them. Okay. All right. So then I cut out a little piece of paper ahead of time that I'm going to actually back my doors with so that way I can stamp like a fun little image or put something inside the doors. So I'm going to do that right now. And I have this little sentiment that says wishing you lots of smiles, which I love. One of my lawn con stamps. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp that right here. Okay. Oh, that's a little crooked, but that's all right. And then I have my little mousy guy here. He's just so cute. And I want him blowing some cute little bubbles. So we'll put him down here. And he has the little bubble wand. Let's put that in his little paw. There we go. Perfect. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to adhere that on the inside. But before we glue that down, I cut out a piece of vellum because this little top part right here, I want this to kind of look a little bit foggy. Like it's like we're looking through like some glass. So I will take a moment now to do a quick little bit of watercoloring. So we're trying to kind of aim for this color. I know it's not going to be perfect, but we're kind of looking for kind of a bricky, a brick-esque kind of color. So I know that this brown is not going to be quite the right color, but we'll add this with a, maybe a little bit of red. I think we'll probably get to that burgundy looking kind of color. There we go. Nice. That's the color I'm looking for. Brick colored. All right, so I'm just gonna do some watercolors here. Oh, we might need to add just a touch more red to that. There we go. Watercolor all the little bricky bricks. I had a lot of fun uh, making these papers or making this door paper. I actually have a bunch more that I'm making. Um, not all doors, but um, some different fun um, little designs and images, and I'm really excited to share them with you. So I'll be doing that um, probably towards closer to the end of the summer, but just know there's a bunch of cool stuff on the way. And I, I've been ordering some new companies. We're gonna get a bunch of new products coming in. So it's gonna be a fun, fun summer. I'm really excited. Okay. Red down here. Again, I'm only doing the bricks. I know it's not going to be perfect with the burgundy here, but it's going to be kind of close. If you're doing watercolors, you may find that you want to make it closer to that burgundy color, or you might have a different paper that has bricks already on it, and which would be perfect. Um, but there are lots of options for, for doing your brick siding here. Okay, so there we have our bricks. And then now we're going to do the door, and I want my door to kind of be kind of brown color here. Go in and add a little bit of watercolor. I love doing watercoloring. It's just so much fun. And it's a great way to kind of pull in some different colors and kind of create like different, um, you know, looks and feelings kind of depending you know you can make this like an oriental looking door or you can make it just like you know with like certain like yellows and golds or you can make it like just like a, a normal door with like shades of brown 
or you could make it like bright yellow or blue. So you have definitely have some different options for coloring your doors. And different door colors, you know, kind of um, bring out different feelings for the door or different themes. All right, I'm gonna do the top guy here. Okay. All right, and then the inside of my door, we do a different, slightly different shade of brown here, a little bit lighter tone of brown. Ooh, that's not my favorite shade of brown, but that's okay. We're going with it. I might add just a touch of yellow into that. Come back to that in a second. Let's get the browns down here. I know we're, I'm, I have a lot of ideas to share with you, but apparently I'm gonna get caught up in the watercoloring at the moment. I really like to do watercolors. Speaking of watercolors, I personally will be offering a watercolor class this fall, so that will be very exciting to kind of start doing that kind of stuff again. I'm so excited to finally have be offering in-person classes. I mean, it's not happening yet, but this fall it will be, and I'm pretty thrilled. It's going to be great. Okay, I'm going to just add this stuff a bit here. And now we'll do the little stairs, and we'll just do those out of the gray. Ended up with kind of a brownie gray. There we go. And a blue gray, not a, not a brown gray. All right. So once you have your door watercolored, then my plan here that we'll do a little blue for the window. And I'm gonna pick this blue. Call that a window, nice window blue. Okay, so once you have your window all painted, then here is my thought is that oh i need to just now realize i need to paint my little bubbles here and i also need to paint my little mouse i can't believe i forgot to do that i'm gonna make a little gray mouse here cute little guy and honestly you can put anything inside your door so if you're like i don't have that mouse that's okay you can pick something else to go inside the door I just like little creatures inside the door because I think that's cute. Okay. All right. So now that we have that. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this piece of the vellum circle over the window and that's just going to kind of make it look just a little bit foggy. So we're going to put that right here and I'm going to trim it actually. So it's a little bit, um, it's going to go past the window probably by about a half of an inch. So as you stick that on, you'll see that there open up our little doors here. I guess you could do brown on the back side of the doors too, wouldn't hurt. Okay, so you'll see how it's kind of going past that window. So that little bit there, we're actually gonna take this and fold it under to the back side of the window. And we're gonna just go ahead and take that in place. Oh, never mind, we're gonna glue it in place. Oops. I forgot I need to put more tape in my tape gun. So we're gonna glue that in place back here. When you're gluing vellum, as a reminder, you can always see the glue. So in order to kind of hide that, you'd have to kind of get clever with where you're putting your glue. So just letting you know that. Okay, oh, and since this doesn't wanna stay up, we're gonna to need to put a tiny little bit of glue. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that by putting glue only on these little lines right here. Um, where the window opens, so then that way, if you are going to see the glue, at least it makes sense with the drawing here. So we're going to see that. Maybe we won't see it. If I smash it down. We'll see what happens. It might look good, it might not look good, but we're going to go with it. All right, so there we have our little window and we have our little doors. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this down. And let's just see if I can, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put that right in the middle here. 
just a very small amount of glue. Maybe down a little bit further. We'll see how that looks. Perfect. All right, now I can go ahead and glue my door in place. So once you have the glue on there, then we're going to flip this over and we're going to line this up on top of our little image here. And just so that, that way we don't see, match up with that bottom, that way we don't see the edges of that paper we're kind of trying to hide there. And press that down. And I'm going to go ahead, I need to add just a little bit more glue on the sides here. And on this side here. All right, and then I'm going to just trim off any extra bricks that might be peeking out on the side of that. And there we have, whoops, just a bit more glue up here. All right, so there we have our first door card. Isn't that so cute? Oh my gosh, I love it. And the little mouse on the inside wishing you lots of smiles. Isn't that so fun? Okay, so that's my first idea to share with you. All right, now on to the next ideas. Okay, so this next one, I want to use this little guy here. Let's see here. Okay. So I really like this door. It's probably one of my favorite ones from this grouping. I just love the little stairs and the little bricks along the outside and the texture. It's just so much fun. Cut this guy out. Little stairs. And I'm gonna do just a quick little bit of watercoloring because I love to do watercolors, but also I, um, I guess I could pull up my markers. That would be another quick option, but watercolors are my go-to form of coloring because it's just so easy. So easy to do. Okay, and then we'll add a little bit of yellow to the lock here. And let's see what else we wanna do here. I think we're gonna go into these kind of gray tones here or oh, kind of a blue gray for the little stairs. I think that I want to do my bricks. We'll do these out of the red again. Put a little bit of red into this card. At least a little bit of color. And then we'll go in and add just a tiny little bit of brown kind of just here and there just to kind of create some dimension on that. Okay, and then we'll add a little bit of brown down here at the bottom for the ground. I guess we probably could need that green, but we're going with it. Oh, I'll probably add just a touch of green over here, just to kind of add just a touch more color into our card here. There we go. Okay, so once that is painted, set that to the side. Okay, so now we're going to take our X-Acto knife again, and we are going to... I'm going to cut so that that way this, this little door just on the inside opens up. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut um, from the top here of this the little arrow. I'm just gonna go a little bit higher up than that. And then I'm just gonna go all the way around the door here on the right side. And then also along the bottom. Okay, all right. Then I'm gonna use, oh, go ahead and cut all the way, friend. There we go. I'm gonna use my scoreboard again to create a fold line right all along the edge. Okay, so that way that opens up perfectly. Wonderful. All right, so now on my front of my card here, oh, I'm definitely gonna need to add something else to the front of this card, but we're just gonna go with it for just the time being here. 
So I'm gonna actually put this, I'm gonna make my card a bit smaller, I think. Do a little trifold card before I glue this on. First off, I'm gonna glue this on here. So that way I don't forget. All right, so I'm just gonna do um, the stairs and the brick. So I'm not gonna do the, I'm not gonna glue any of the inside where the door is. I'm gonna put this just right along the bottom of my card here. I'm gonna trim this so it's just a touch shorter. There we go. All right, so cute. I don't know if I've ever done this technique before, but I really like to do it. Let me find my pen here. Oh, pen I want to use. after but that's all right so i don't know if you guys have ever done this before but um when i was younger i took an art class and they said why don't you draw from the image and i was like well that's kind of an interesting kind of concept the idea being that any lines that are already there then you can just kind of draw out from there so then it kind of looks like it's all part of the actual like drawing itself so here we have some like little grasses of course i realize that this is going to make a lot more sense for me on my end because this is actually my art so i it's mine's all gonna look exactly the same but I do um, but it's still a really fun technique just to kind of add a little bit of like extra kind of oomph to a card if you're like you know wanting to add something else to it you can just draw from the image and kind of draw out from there kind of extending those lines and so that's what I'm gonna do here just to kind of make it just a little different and of course here I'm just kind of drawing my little extra little bricks in place. But it's also a great opportunity to kind of do like a little bit of doodling. All right, and that just kind of makes it look a little bit more full, at least for the most part. And I'm just gonna add some little grasses in over here and some little grasses in over here. And oh, we'll just make this kind of fun and put like some little dangly stars because that seems kind of like classic Ellie. And some little dot groupings just to kind of fill the space. Okay, then because I had done that around the outside, I'm going to just add a tiny touch more watercolor just so then that way I can kind of bring that um, design together, make it look a little bit more cohesive. Add some brown, add some green. And that way it's look like all like one card here. So then on the inside of the card, oh, that's right. So here we have our little door. And of course you could stamp something here. What I'm gonna do actually, I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna open up my little door here and I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife and actually cut out this little spot right here. This little, I'm gonna make this a cutout. So I'm just lining it up and kind of cutting out right along the edge of that brick there. I'm trying not to cut out any more of my door image, only this background piece here. Okay, so just pull that out. All right, so now, because it's a trifold card that I created, now here where we open this up, that actually leads to this under the second layer right here, which is perfect. So my thought for this guy is I have these cute little stamps. Again, they're more little mice stamps from Lawn Fawn because I love them so much. So we'll stick this little guy on here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my stamping right in here so then that way I can make sure that when I open my door, I can actually see what I'm doing. And I'm noticing my mouse might be a little big for my door, but you know what? It's a magical door. The mice can be a little on the big side and that's okay. So I'm gonna stamp this guy right in here. Oh, so cute. And then he has this little dandelion because he's blowing dandelion wishes. We'll stamp that guy next. That way he's actually blowing on it. You can actually see that there. And then I have these little flyaway bits. And I think what I'm gonna do here for the flyaway bits is I'm actually gonna open this up and I'm gonna stamp the little flyaway bits kind of everywhere. And just so that it looks like he's not standing on air, I'm just gonna do a little ground right here for him. And We'll add in some little grasses just to kind of make that kind of consistent and some little dog groupings. Oh, Ranger, are you 
okay? Hold on, guys. Ranger's kind of an older dog, so I'm always kind of keeping an eye out for him, making sure he's doing okay. All right, I'm sorry. I don't know if you guys heard that, but Ranger was coughing, and Ranger's here with me at the moment, so I just got to make sure that he's doing all right, because I get worried about him. Okay, all right, so now we're going to go ahead and paint our little mousey here. It's going to be a little gray mousey. Whoops. On his ears and stomach to be in the pink tones. So I'll take his little ear and his little stomach. And then we'll go in and add some green for the ground. We'll make our dandelion kind of a, a yellow ochre kind of color because you've got to add at least a little bit of color to that. I know technically the stem should probably be green, but that's all right. We're going with it. All right. So there we have our cute little inside of our card. And then that would be, this would be where you would write your little nice little message to your recipient. Isn't that so cute? Oh my gosh. I love that. Okay. On to the next idea. I've got lots of ideas to share with you guys today. So thanks for bearing with me. I just get so excited about so many different things. So with this idea, I wanted to use my next little doors here. The next door I'm, I'm gonna use, I'm actually gonna use this guy here. Um, so I wanted to use this door, but I also wanted to use this tiny little door and I could do my fussy cutting with my scissors But I think at this moment, I'm actually just going to use my exacto knife Because it just works out super nicely especially because you can get some nice crisp edges with an exacto knife Oops, already did that one top guy there and this little guy here. I think I should come right out. Perfect. And then the little lantern on the side here. We're going to go ahead. Oh, I should probably fussy cut this guy. Huh? Okay, so we'll get the little lantern going here. I'm not going to get the little curls on that lantern, but I at least will add some sort of pointy edge on that. Sometimes when I'm fussy cutting, I'll cut out some of the more intricate details because it's just going to be super time consuming to try and cut out all the little details in that. And I do know that my art can be kind of um, detailed. And so because of that, I don't expect you guys, of course, to do all of, to cut out every single little detail in all my little doors. I'm just kind of showing you some fun ideas to kind of inspire you. So then you can create art with doors. All right, so we did that guy. And then, so I have my little lantern, I'm gonna tuck that to the side, and my door, tuck that to the side. All right, now I'm gonna cut out this little tiny door right here. And I actually want all these little bricks, at least as much as I can. little brick wall out here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yes, I know this demo has a lot of fussy cutting and exacto knife work in it, but you know what? Sometimes I just want to get inspired by different things, and for many years I love to do exacto knife work because you can get so much detail, which I really like. Okay, so pull this little guy out. Oops. Alright. Okay, so now here is my thought. Okay, first off here, 
on our outside here. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna glue this in place. And I'm not gonna watercolor this one. I'll come back to it. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm totally gluing this down. I glued down the, um, the full door here to the card base. Oh, I need to fix this line here because I accidentally cut that off, okay? All right, so this is what we have at the moment. Now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna open this up. Now I'm going to cut out so that the door will open, okay? So I'm just gonna cut along this edge right here, right along the top, and then on the right side of the door and the bottom of the door. Okay, but I'm not cutting on the far left side because of course our door needs to open. I'm just gonna go ahead and fold that. Normally I would score it, but that seems like it's fine. Okay, so then on the inside, now I'm gonna pick a piece of paper here that's going to I want it to back right behind this door completely. Okay, so this is my thought here. So I'm gonna put some glue on here on the left and right. Stick that in place. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing again with the little door. We're doing a door within a door, you guys. Ah, I'm so happy with it. I'm so happy with it. Once again, I'm gonna completely adhere the entire door and stairs on the inside, I'm gonna put that there. Then I'm gonna take my exacto knife again, and once again, I'm gonna cut out this little door. And I even like I'll put like a little sign so you can like write like a tiny little message on the inside of the little door, like we'll be back later, or fairies inside, or something. You can come up with a fun little sentiment for your little sign there. Again, I'm cutting on the top right and on the bottom so i'm not actually cutting out the door i'm only cutting it so that the door will open up and we're gonna open it that way and there we have our door within a door isn't this so cute oh my gosh oh my gosh i just love that and then you can put like a tiny little message or you put something on the inside you know just something that makes you happy who knows what you want to do there but i just love that idea love that concept and of course on the outside we'll put our little lamp so then that way we can makes it at least a little bit more complete before i watercolor that and i might go back and watercolor this or I might just leave it black and white but now at least you have some ideas for using your cute little doors okay all right, on to the next idea. Okay. I'm particularly excited about this idea. I'm just really excited about using my doors. So that's why this demo is a little longer is because I'm just so thrilled. So I'm hoping you guys are feeling the same way and enjoying it just as much as I am. But if you're not, then sorry, because I, I'm having a great time. I love it. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So on this one, I'm actually just gonna cut out the door and just stick it on. So we're gonna use this door here. I love, I'm sure you guys heard of this out already. I just really love fairy doors. I love little magical doorways. I just think they're so much fun. Um, and there's so many different things you can do with them. And so this next idea was inspired from something that I made a number of years ago, but I. I really love the look, like the idea of like this little hidden door, like maybe like in a field or something was kind of my thought. I'm going to go ahead and just quickly color this really fast. Um, I'm bring out the, break out the watercolors again. I'm just going to do a little bit of brown here just to kind of make this at least look somewhat like a door. Water brush is running out of water. All right. Okay, oh, it looks pretty door y to me. All right, okay. For this guy, we're going to go ahead and just glue this right directly onto the front of my card base. The whole door. I'm just gonna glue that straight on here. And then my thought here is that maybe we would have like this kind of like scene, like maybe there's like a doorway, but it's like kind of hidden. I love that idea. So we're gonna go ahead and just adhere this in place. Make it kind of secret. Okay, 
Okay. And put this little guy in front here. And I'm a smaller tree, but it's fine. It works. Oops. Okay. All right, so we have a little hidden door back here. And then we have this awesome cattail landscape, which I love, and a little hillside back here. And so, all right, so this is my little cattail landscape and my little hillside here. Now, I also really want to incorporate this little mushroom scene. So I'm kind of doing kind of a lot of stuff, but I just really, really love this look of everything kind of going on here. So first thing I'm going to do is I want to add some more trees for my background. So I'm going to take my green ink pad here with a sponge and just add a little bit of green kind of back here. Some more greenery. So it looks like kind of a forest scene. It's kind of my thought. Okay, so I'm just going to add just a touch of, of that up there. And we'll add a more, one more over here. Okay, all right. So we have a little bit of our forest scene. Oh, and add a little bit more right here. Okay, so close enough. Looks pretty good. I might add just a little bit of brush on just a little bit more green. There we go. Okay, so then we're gonna have, let's see what we have, can think about for these little mushrooms. Oh, just love them so much. Mushrooms and cattails, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I know it's kind of a lot, but I just really love kind of that like, kind of scene kind of in the woods. So first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to color my little mushroom tops. So I'm gonna do that with a marker here. This is a Tombow marker and it has like kind of a brush tip on it. So that way we can get some nice vibrant colors here for our little fairy mushrooms. Okay, do this guy, and this guy, and this guy. All right, and then I'm gonna go back in here with just a white gel pen and just add some little dots of white. So make this kind of fairy-esque. I think that's pretty fun. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and glue the whole thing together here. So I'm going to put some glue on the back side of my little mushroom border. I'll stick that on here first. I know mine's kind of hanging off the edge a little bit, but that's okay. And then we'll do the grass. We'll go next so my little mushrooms are sticking out of the grass and then lastly we'll put on our cattail landscape here and that's because I want to kind of look like a fairy door kind of hidden in the forest that's kind of my my thought and my theme for this card all right so then on the sides we'll go ahead and trim this off anything sticking off the edge All right, and there we have our cute little fairy door in the woods. Oh, and I'm noticing I've added a little bit of green around that. Maybe what I'll do just to kind of make that look like it's kind of meant to be is we'll kind of add a little bit more green kind of here and there just to kind of make that look a little bit more like a the forest floor kind of a thing or like some foliage kind of coming in here and kind of overgrowing it. Oh, yes, I love that. So cute. Oh my gosh, I'm so pleased. That is just so much fun, the little door. Okay, all right. I have one more idea for you. Okay, so the last idea, we're gonna use just a couple more of these little doors. So I'm gonna use this guy here. And I'm gonna use this guy here. So what I did here was um, I have a piece of 12 by 12 paper and I scored it every two and three quarters of an inch. So, and then at the, what was left over was this little tab. So then that way you can kind of glue that in place or adhere that in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that right now. Turn that over and 
stick that down. Okay, so we've created kind of like a little box with not a top or a bottom. All right, so now I want to stick my little door in here and I know that the rocks are gonna kind of hang off the edge a little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of fussy cut around some of these little rocks here because I know they are not all going to fit on there. And then I got my little roof. And then we'll do these little rocks on this side. All right, so then we have our little door here. And I'm gonna have to trim these off, a couple more of these off, just ever so slightly. Fit on there now. Oh, so close. All right, pretty close. Okay, and a second door. All right, I'm gonna quickly watercolor these little guys. Lots of watercoloring for this demo. Okay, actually see what this looks like. I don't know if you guys have seen me do this technique before, but you can actually take an ink pad and just kind of swipe on it and it kind of colorizes the door. So let's see if we can do that here too. Oh, it's kind of interesting. The Distress Ink brand is not, um, is not waterproof, which means you can actually go in and actually move the ink a little bit even after the ink has dried um, because like I said, the ink is not waterproof. So then you can actually manipulate it just slightly. I might have made that just a tiny bit too dark, but we'll see how it goes. My little door here. And we'll do this guy the same way. Kind of got a little bit too much brown on my little window here, but that's all right. Kind of go with it. Okay. And then we'll colorize some of these little rocks around the outside. Okay. All right, and then we'll just finalize this by just finishing coloring the roof there. Okay, so then once you have your little doors all colored, then we can go ahead and mount those and glue them onto our little box base here. So we'll do this one first on my front of my little house. So we'll glue that down. And then on the back side, I made a little back door. Woohoo! This little back door will glue that in place back here. Okay. So now I'm going to make a little roof. So that's what this circle is. To make a roof of a house, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to cut up into the center here. I'm going to cut out, um, I think I'm just going to cut out about an eighth of the pie. So if this is a quarter, and that's half of the half of a quarter is an eighth. And then you can just put some glue in place here and you just wrap it and stick that in place. And that gives yourself like a little bit of a roof. And you could of course cut out more of the pie and make it a tighter cone. And then that way you kind of get a little bit more of a pointier roof. I just need it to just be very basic though. All right, so there's my little roof here. Got just a tiny little bit more glue. Okay. All right, so that's gonna be the roof of our little house here. And I actually want my roof to just be a little bit more, just like a little different. So I'm gonna actually crease it and I'm gonna fold it in half, line up my creases and crease it this way. And this is gonna make it so that my roof has just a little, it just looks a little more like an actual roof, okay? So this is our little, our little house situation. And I'm gonna use some hot glue at this point. I'm gonna put hot glue in each of my corners here two, three, and four. And then that way, when I stick on my roof, it will, where it sticks and touches those corners, it's now actually going to glue and adhere in place. Now I'm going to take my brown ink pad here with my little sponge, and I'm gonna go back in, and I'm just gonna ink 
the walls and the edges and all of this kind of fun stuff just to kind of make this look a little bit more magical looking. I need to add a touch more glue, I think, on this corner. There we go. All right. So we're just adding some ink onto the little sides here. Oh my goodness. Come on, glue dry. And you can add some like other little things or little details or other little elements onto your little house here. So you can do like a little cattail border along the sides here. Actually, speaking of, I have my piece from earlier. So I'm actually just gonna use that as a little stencil. Let's see if I can do some stenciling where my paper is not flat. We're about ready to find out. Oh, cute, that works. Just add a little bit more on the outside here. Oh my gosh. It's because I did not let my glue dry. I just completely went on to the next step. Right. Okay, so then for the top of the house here, we'll just add, whoops, it's kind of hot still. Just brush on a little bit more ink here to make kind of a funky looking fairy house. Just make it look a little old, like it's been around the block for a while. I'm just doing some quick inking here just to add a little bit of dimension. Oh goodness, my roof does not want to stay on. It normally should. Hot glue adheres to that really strongly. Um, hot glue adheres really nicely to paper. All right. And then we'll have our little cocktail landscape. There we go. So I know it's not perfect, but just kind of the concept and that kind of a fun idea. All right. And I might actually take my blending brushes and, ink and add a little bit more ink, but you kind of get the same idea. All right. Then the one little thing I definitely want to add is I want to add a little dangly star. So I have some of this kind of fun beady kind of stuff. I'm going to add a little bit of glue onto the top of that. Okay, so I'm gluing that little bead bit to the bottom here of this little roof. And then, whoops, hot glue. So we're going to stick that there. And then we're going to stick on this little star. How's the pop? Well, you're looking okay, huh? <laughs> Dan just yeah. got here, that's why he's talking. Hello. All right, so then we have our little dangly star here. Isn't that so cute? So there we are, that's today's demo, friends. So we have our little doors, whoops, that idea, and our little mushroom scene, and our little door within a door, whoops, door within a door, and our little mouse blowing bubbles within a door and our little trifold little door card. So lots of fun door ideas. I hope that you guys are inspired and I really thank you so much for coming out for my demos and watching and bearing with me as sometimes I get distracted and I have other things going on. So <laughs> thanks guys, I appreciate you. All right, have a fun rest of your day guys. I'll see you later, bye-bye.